What's up, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Kelvin's Garage. Today, we have a very quick episode for you. We are going to do the ECM PCM Idle Learn Procedure. Okay, so what is the ECM PCM idle learn procedure. Well, if you watched our last video, what we did is we cleaned the throttle body. And what happens is that once you clean the throttle body, the engine adjustment, the engine computer adjustment to compensate for our previously dirty throttle body is now off, okay? So we need to actually tell the computer, the ECM, engine control module, slash PCM, power crane, power train control module, we need to tell it to relearn the idle so that after we have cleaned the throttle body, everything is nice and sound in terms of the idle speed. All right, first I wanna show you guys that this is not some BS that I made up, okay? So if you go to the website, our favorite website, civic.hondafitjazz.com, okay? And if you kinda of scroll through there looking for this, you will find that there is an official ECM idle learn procedure, okay? And basically what it says here is that the idle learn procedure must be done so that the ECM PCM can learn the engine idle characteristics. Do the idle learn procedure whenever you do any of these actions, replace the ECM PCM, reset the ECM PCM, update the ECM PCM, or replace or clean the throttle body, which is what we just did recently, okay? Note, erasing DTCs, those are the uh, diagnostic trouble codes, with the HDS does not require you to do the idle learn procedure, okay? I, uh, HDS, I think, is some kind of like Honda diagnostic service software or something like that. So don't worry about that HDS thing. But basically, this says that if you do any of the following, in which we did, okay, the throttle body, we need to do the idle relearn procedure, okay? This is the official, official uh, instructions from Honda, okay? All right, so let's take a look at the procedure, okay? So procedure step one, all right? Make sure all electrical items, AC, audio, lights, etc., are off, all right? So everything's off. Okay, number two, reset the ECM PCM with the HDS, okay? We don't have the Honda diagnostic software, okay? We don't have the HDS, and so we are not going to reset the ECM using any kind of fancy software. Instead, we're going to do what the good old internet says to do, and with our hands, we're going to unplug the battery, okay? We're going to unplug the battery. And essentially, by unplugging the battery, you will cause the ECM to reset, okay? To start up in its reset mode after you replug the battery, okay? So we need like 5 to 15 minutes. Some people say you need to wait a long time because, you know, the the memory is being stored on the ECM, okay? And then it takes some time to, to drain out. Because some people say 5 minutes, some people say 15 minutes, some people say 30 seconds. Let's just say somewhere between 5 and 15 minutes, all right? So unplug the battery and then replug the battery, okay? And then turn the ignition switch on, okay? To position two, wait two seconds. All right, and then start the engine and hold the engine speed at 3,000 RPM, okay, without load, okay, in either park or neutral until the radiator fan comes on, okay? So we need to, to hold the speed, 3,000 RPM, until the radiator fan comes on. Or the engine coolant temperature reaches 90 C, okay? So we don't have an actual temperature a thermometer okay we don't know the actual temperature so what we can do is we can just wait till the radiator fan turns on okay and then once that has happened okay you just let the engine idle for about five minutes with the throttle fu throttle fully closed so we'll just release our foot okay and we'll just let it idle for five minutes and there's a note here if the radiator fan comes on do not include its running time in the five minutes okay so if the radiator fan comes on just uh you know ignore it all right and then keep counting after that, okay, for until five minutes is, has elapsed, okay? And finally, we don't have the HDS, but it says to verify on the HDS data list that the idle learn procedure is complete. We're just gonna have to cross our fingers to, uh, and believe that it's complete at that point. All right, so just like the instructions say, the first thing we need to do is disconnect the battery and reset the ECU, okay? So we can uh, undo either one, okay, either the positive or the negative terminal. We are just going to undo the negative ground terminal, okay? And we're gonna just let it hang for 15 minutes or so, max, okay? Don't wait too much longer than that. Okay, now once our 15 minutes are up, we can now replug the battery, all right? Replug the battery, and the ECU should be reset and ready to reprogram with the engine learn procedure. All right, so just tighten this back up, and then we'll start up the car.
All right, now the next step is to turn our ignition to position two. Now here we are, position two. Okay, all accessories are off, all right? No radio, no blower, nothing, all right? Okay, and now the next step is to start the engine. So let's start the engine like normal. While we're in park or neutral, start the engine and hold the RPM at 3,000. Okay, without the load, here we go. So I'm gonna step on some gas. Let it run a little bit at 3,000. You guys see that? So actually I'm gonna hold it a little bit longer than that. Hold it at 3,000. Okay, so just hold this, all right? Hold this, it might take a couple minutes for the engine to reach its uh, operating temperature, okay? But if you look over here, okay, if you go to the temperature, okay, it's gonna start rising and rising. All right, and the idea is that we have to get it to 90C, okay? Now, I think 90C is just the standard operating temperature. So once the temperature gets to like the middle region here somewhere, okay, and then the fan starts to turn on, that's when we will be complete, all right? But just hold it here at 3000. Okay, try to do that as long as you can. Okay, just keep it there, all right? Okay, we are still holding it at 3000. It's okay to fluctuate a little bit, but try your best to keep it right at 3000, all right? And if we take a look at our temperature gauge, okay, we are still somewhere in the middle, okay, reaching the nominal operating temperature, all right? And just keep going until the fan turns on. Okay, so we've been holding for a couple minutes, okay? And not much has changed over here, okay? So what I did notice is that the uh, RPM uh, starts fluctuating a little bit once I hold it there for a while. Uh, if the fan is turning on, I can't hear it, okay? Because the engine is revving right now, but I think what's happening is that when the fan turns on, the revs will shift a little bit, okay? So that's kind of your indicator that the fan has turned on, all right? And if everything is working, your thermostat is working, all your cooling system is working, you shouldn't get too much temperature increase, all right? So the middle right here is about uh, about all it will do, all right, in terms of, in terms of uh, the operating temperature, all right? So just keep it here at 3000, and I would say after just a couple of minutes, okay, if you see some fluctuation, on the RPM, I would say it's safe to to let it go. Okay, let it go and put it into the idle. All right, so I would say let's do it now. Okay, let's let's now let go of the 3000 RPM thing and let it idle. All right, and there it goes. Okay, we're letting it idle, all right? So the next step is to just let it do this for five minutes, all right? Five minutes. If the fan turns on, it turns on. Okay, don't count that as part of the five minutes but just let it idle here, okay? To be on the safe side, why don't you just let it idle for like 10 minutes, okay? And I think by the 10 minutes is up, this should be uh, fully relearned. All right, so right there, the fan turned on. You can't hear it, but you can kind of feel the engine uh, idle speed increase just a little bit, okay? And uh, you can kind of hear it go, all right, you can hear the fan turning on, all right? So that is part of the five minutes. Just keep it here, keep it here, let it do what it needs to do to relearn the idle. Let's see if we can capture the fan turning on again. All right, right there, did you see that? That's the fan turning on. There's a little jiggle in the RPM and then it goes up a little higher and then you hear the fan running. Let's see if we can catch the fan from the outside here. it just happened okay it went up it went okay and then the fan turned off and then just sank again the idle speed returned to its natural position so that's the little idle surge slash fan activation that you should be looking for all right so it's been like seven minutes or so and I would say uh, we've been waiting for the idle speed to kind of settle and learn uh, itself okay with the throttle position fully closed all right which is just sitting in the car, letting it run. And I think it's about time that we can shut this thing off, okay? So, uh, that is it, all right? So that is it, the idle learn procedure is complete.
okay so at this point I would say it's safe to turn the car off so it's doing a little fan thing right now let's turn it off okay so the main thing I've noticed is while I'm driving right now right is when you reach a stop sign and then you step on the brake the idle is not surging well beyond like a thousand and then kind of uh, dying out from there okay so before what was happening is that the idle speed uh, when you're at a, when you slow to a stop sign or stoplight the idle speed will surge up and then you'll kind of feel the car while you're in drive the car will kind of lurch forward all right it's gonna kind of like have a tendency to want to go forward okay that's because the idle speed is too high and the engine is is in gear the car is in gear and the engine is pushing the car forward unintentionally okay so but after you do the idle uh, learn procedure which I just completed okay it's feeling much better now okay once I slow down at a stop sign it kind of surges between like uh, seven and eight hundred okay and then it kind of dies out a little bit settles around like six or so okay so this is the way it should be all right it should be nice and smooth you shouldn't have these sudden surges in the rpm uh, when you're at uh, a full stop while in gear all right so that's it the idle learn procedure is complete all right and if you look at the idle speed here nice and steady let's give it a rev or two and you see it surges a little bit but it just sinks back down to right where it needs to be okay and uh, it's a nice and steady value if we look at our obd fusion app okay and we take a look at the diagnostics here okay we got around 725 rpm okay 720 725 a nice and steady that's a good range technically the range should be from six to eight hundred so this is this is pretty good i think so yeah there it goes the idle speed is now nice and steady okay when the fan turns on the idle speed will shift a little bit like that okay but you see the it's compensating for it okay the engine is compensating for the fan keeps the idle speed nice and steady around the mid 700 low to mid 700 range all right and that's it the idle learn procedure is complete and you should be ready to go. So if you found this video helpful, please like, comment, or subscribe. And I'll see you next time on Kelvin's Garage.